Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to move away from having a look at one of our business studies topics, and instead we're going to have a look at one of the fundamental exam skills that students need to try and perfect uh, for their examinations. Now, this is a topic that I get asked about a lot, and I, I realise that examination skills are, are one of the harder things for students to perfect. Here's the facts for you. Rightly or wrongly, you can know everything about business studies and still not do very well in the subject. Now, that may sound harsh, but you could know every single topic on the specification inside out. And the very best you might get in your qualification is a D grade. And the reason for that is because business studies is not just assessing the skill of knowledge through the examinations. There's some higher level, higher order skills that are being assessed as well. Namely, that of application, analysis, and evaluation as well. So, whereas knowledge is absolutely essential to help you understand what a question is asking you and to be able to think of the outline of an answer, and it will get you through multiple choice sections of exam papers as well, as soon as we start moving on to longer written answers, as well as showing knowledge, you've also got to show some higher order skills as well, which is where our application, our analysis, and with the very longer questions where our evaluation comes in as well. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're just going to pluck one of these exam skills. We're going to try and dissect exactly what the exam board are looking for, how we show this skill. Essentially, what we're trying to help you to do is to make sure that you get the marks in the examination, you get the grades in the examination, that your knowledge warrants. There's no sadder story in life than seeing students on results day who do not get the marks, do not get the grades that their revision, their preparation, and their knowledge deserve because they haven't shown the exam boards what they want. It's a bit of a box ticking exercise, knowing what the exam board wanna see in an answer, but if you can perfect it, the grades are there for you. So let's have a little look at analysis, first of all. Let's break this word down. What exactly are we talking about when we are analysing something? Well, first of all, analysing is about consequences. It's about impacts. It's about ramifications. It's about taking something that we know about business studies, and if that were to occur, if that were to happen, what would the consequences be? Now, those could be positive consequences, they could be negative consequences, but when we're analysing something, we're trying to have a look around that topic, we're trying to have a look around that point and explain what the consequences of that point might be. If that point were to occur, what does that mean? What could happen? Now, Let's take an example that's absolutely nothing to do with business studies. Let's take a rather trivial example. Imagine I am teaching one of my lessons and one of the students stands up, walks up to me and he bops me square on my nose and he exits the classroom. And I am writhing around in pain as I'm prone to do with my incredibly low pain threshold. We could, if that, we could have a little look at the, the analytical, analytical consequences of that scenario. So let's have a little think. I've just been punched on the nose by a student. What's a consequence of that? That student's gonna get excluded, quite rightly too, for the pain they've inflicted on me. What are the other consequences gonna be? Well, I'm gonna to have to go to the hospital and have my nose reset. Um, what are the other consequences? The crime rates in the country are going to go up. Uh, as I press charges and the student, we'll call him Little Jimmy, Little Jimmy then gets arrested, and so we've, we've added to the crime rates of the country. What are the other consequences? Well, as I've been bopped on the nose, I am now covered in blood, and it's gone over all of my, uh, it's gone all over all my clothes, and it's ruined my lucky shirt. Uh, what's another consequence? Well, next time I walk into school, my class will have a good old giggle at the fact that my nose is now in plaster and classes do love to have a little giggle at me. So, we've got all kind of various consequences there. What we're doing is we're showing analysis. Something has happened. Little Jimmy has bopped me on my nose. And an analysis is saying what the consequences of that point, what that idea, what that situation are. So that's good. What we've just given the exam board there, as well as a broken elbow, what we've just given the exam board there 
is the skill of analysis. We've shown them, hey, we don't just know ideas about business studies. We don't just state points about business studies. We can give analysis of those points. Let's take it a stage further though, because I'm sure many of you are aspiring for the top grades in business. You're looking for those A stars, those A's, those B's, those C's. Now, strangely enough, the exam board are a bit greedy on this. They don't want, for the very top grade, students to just be analyzing. They've got a little phrase. What they actually want to see is chains of analysis. Not just lots of scattergun analytical points. They want to see a chain of analysis where one idea leads to the next, almost like a ripple effect. So one thing happens, leads to something else, and that leads on to the next thing, which progressively leads on to the next thing. It's what the exam board refer to as chains of analysis. Now, in my example there of little Jimmy bopping me on the nose, I was throwing out analytical consequences, almost like machine gun fire. You know, Jimmy's getting excluded, I'm going to hospital, the crime rates have gone up, I'm covered in blood, my lucky shirt. Oh, next, the next time I'm in there, the class are having a giggle. Almost like our consequences are just being thrown out there in a scatter gun approach. What I haven't done is take any of those consequences, take any of those analytical impacts and develop them and say, Okay, so that could happen, and what might happen as a result? Take, for example, the fact that I've been covered in blood and it's all over my lucky shirt. Let's not stop there. What happens next? Well, I was planning on wearing that lucky shirt tomorrow to a very important job interview. Now I can't. Okay, so what happens next? I feel very insecure and nervous when I go to the job interview. All right. What happens next? I choke at the job interview and I end up not getting the job of my dreams. Okay, what happens next? Um, I'd already resigned from the job I had, thinking I was a banker for the job of my dreams, and now I'm less jobless. Okay, and next? I then can't pay my mortgages. Brilliant, and what next? I then end up losing my home. Brilliant, what next? I then end up having to cancel Christmas for my entire family and my three children are left playing with wrapping paper on Christmas morning for the third Christmas running, rather than playing with toys. That time we've taken an answer, taken an analytical idea, and rather than move on and give a different analytical idea, we've kind of drilled down, we've kind of layered through an idea and said, what happens next? If we have a look behind me, we can perhaps try and use a business example or a more theoretical point in order to try and illustrate exactly what we mean. Let's imagine we were looking at one of the case studies in our exams or in a mock paper and the case study was focusing on a, a supermarket like Tesco's and it was talking about the strategy that Tesco's have been pursuing and what they've been up to and somewhere in the case study it says that Tesco's is going through a, a period of rationalization or retrenchment, they're closing down stores, they're making some of their workers redundant. And imagine we're answering a question about you know analyze the impacts of Tesco's closing down 80 stores. Well, there's lots of possible impacts of Tesco's closing down 80 stores. And we could go back to scatter gunning out lots of those different impacts and really just kind of bouncing from one to the other. So we could say, okay, one impact is it reduces Tesco's costs because now they've got less workers. We could say, okay, another impact is that the employees that are left behind that haven't been made redundant are now feeling fearful that they might be next and they're feeling insecure in their jobs. We could say, okay, well, maybe rivals might pick up some additional market share that Tesco's have kind of given up through their retrenchment strategies and they might benefit from that. We bounce on to a different consequence. Maybe the fact there's less Tesco stores available means it's less convenient for customers. They've got to travel further to get to their local Tesco's and that adds a tier of inconvenience to them. Now, what the exam board will reward you for is each of those analytical points. They're all good, they're all perfectly well thought through points. But if we want to maximize our marks, if we want to strive for the very highest grades possible, 
we need to actually dwell on those points and go further, build up a chain of analysis. So if one of these impacts were to occur, what might happen next? What's the subsequent point? We need to go further. So for example, let's imagine we say that our remaining employees feel insecure. Good point, strong point. They've just lost 3,000 of their comrades. They're all gonna be looking around. Are we next? Brilliant. Let's pause on that point. What would that mean? What would happen next? Well, if employees feel insecure about their position at Tesco's, perhaps the next consequence is, is that their morale may drop. Their, their motivation may suffer. They're feeling insecure. They may feel less motivated. Brilliant. What next? Well, because they're less motivated, they might not produce as much work as they were previously, so productivity may drop. So, insecure, morale suffers, productivity drops. Fantastic. But what's the consequence of that productivity dropping? Well, maybe we could say that uh, per employee, Tesco's are not getting as much work from them. So proportionally, that means that Tesco's costs per worker are going to increase. Okay, what's the consequence of that? It now means that Tesco's are now experiencing higher labor costs for the output of work that they're having produced. Okay, what's the consequence of that? Well, compared to rival supermarkets that maybe have got a greater level of productivity per employee, Tesco's are now gonna be less competitive. Okay. So what's the consequence of that? Well, it might mean that Tesco's need to charge higher prices for comparable products at rival supermarkets. Though Tesco's are less price competitive. Okay, let's keep going, let's go further. What are the consequences of that? Well, being less price competitive in a market where customers are becoming more and more price sensitive might mean that Tesco's continue to lose customers to their rivals, okay? What's the consequence of that? Well, if people are deserting Tesco's, then some of their lower cost rivals, like Aldi and Lidl, they might be picking those customers up. All right, what's the consequence of that? We'll keep drilling down. Well, maybe Aldi and Lidl's uh, market share is gonna continue to rise. Maybe Aldi and Lidl's revenues and profits are gonna continue to rise. Okay, let's keep going. Well, maybe if Tesco's market share and revenues and profits start to dwindle, it might mean that it has a knock-on effect on their shareholders who then start to receive more disappointing dividends. Okay, what's the consequence of that? Well, then shareholders have got a choice to make. Shareholders have got to decide, do we continue to carry on holding shares in Tesco's or are we going to sell our stake in Tesco's and are we going to look for firms to invest in and we might get a better return on our investment? What we've done there is we've just taken one idea, we've taken one point and rather than just move on from it very quickly into another idea, we've tried to exhaust it. We've tried to say, what would happen next? We've tried to create not just an impact, but drill down and give a chain of impacts where one point leads logically on to the other. Now, when, when your examiners are marking your examinations, they're gonna read your answer and they have a mark grid. Uh, what they're looking to do is to try and match your answer to a level in this mark grid. Disappointingly, they might match you to a very low level, a level zero, a level one. They might match you at one of the mid levels, or they might really like your answer and match it to one of the high tiers, one of the high levels. One of the things that will convince examiners to place your answer in the higher level boxes giving you access to the highest marks possible for that question, is that rather than just give ideas, rather than just scattergun out a few analytical impacts of those ideas, you're one of the students that is able to give chains of analysis where one point leads to the next. Now, students are always asking me, how long should these chains be? We've got to bear in mind one of the biggest enemies in your exams is going to be the clock. We don't have time to spend an hour on every question. If it's a nine mark question, we've got to move on from that inside nine to ten minutes. So in an ideal world, we would exhaust all of our points. We would see them through to that logical conclusion. In reality, if we're against the clock, 
And, and this is not a figure that the exam boards put out. This is just something that we work on with our students. We aim for chains that are five ideas long. So here's our first impact. And then we're going to drill down and say, okay, here's the next follow on consequence. And another, and it might lead to this. And then that might happen. Finally, this could end up happening as well. We try and make our chains of impact five points long. Fingers crossed with five points, we're really showing the examiner that we're giving detailed, thorough chains of analysis. Little tip for you, it's an important skill. If you can be one of the kids that shows it in your examinations, you will be richly rewarded, I promise you that. And there we go, we'll do future tutorials where we look at application, where we'll look at evaluation as well, but analysis is one of our biggies for the exam. It's worth taking some time to practice some answers, really build up those chains, Try and practice in counting your own levels of analysis, number of links in your chain. It's gonna richly reward you when you're sitting there in the exam hall. Okay, that'll wrap that one up for today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get updates of when all the latest content is available, and we will see you soon, bye-bye.